No. Oh, what the hell is this? Mm, this is good cotton. What's the matter, Dad? Well, uh, look, the damn mainframe is jammed. I had just loaded the program in, and the entire keyboard goes dead. This is just great. Gee, you know, uh, Dave, it looks like you've been hit by that kid's computer virus. Yeah? You know that thing that hit the Pentagon computers and knocked them out for two days? Uh, two days? I don't have two days. I need this print out now. Oh, well, now, you said that you, you loaded the program before the board right. went dead, so you may still be okay. Don't lose your head yet. Okay, wait a minute. Keep your fingers crossed, Paul. Oh, Here there we comes. go. Yeah. There, there it comes now. Okay, there wait a minute. Go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, that's... Yeah. What do you think? Huh. You're a genius, Dave. Oh, shut up, Paul. I hate it when you try and kiss up the me. It's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, Highway Patrol's number one source of income, Dave. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, program. Thank you. Nice to see him. All right, now, now let me explain to you what I'm worried about now. Uh, will George Bush be able to finish up all his vice presidential work by January 20th? That's because... You know, uh, yesterday morning at a press conference in uh, Houston, President-elect George Bush said, uh, I can hardly believe it, it's really finally beginning to sink in. And, of course, he was talking about that whole Dan Quayle nonsense. <laughs> right in, uh, I thought this was nice. I thought this was a darn nice touch. You don't see consideration like this anymore in this crazy, hectic, workaday world we find ourselves in. Uh, Ed Meese came out of seclusion uh, today just to remind everyone that he's still a really unlikable guy. You just... <laughs> ah. Don't you think that's considerate, Paul, that a guy would do that? Nice of him to do that. Yeah. Nice of him. Well, uh, oh my gosh, Paul, did you see the very special episode of Cosby tonight? I'm excited about the episode. Uh, there's good news and bad news about the NBC schedule tonight. The good news, of course, the Cosby show is on for an hour, and the bad news is a different world uh, won't be on at all. Wait, 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 wait a minute. May, maybe I get that backwards. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember anymore. It's a very special episode of Cosby. Tonight. Very special episode. He's a grandfather tonight. Two, two weeks ago, they found out that his daughter was pregnant, and tonight they're having the baby. It's a very, ladies and gentlemen, it's a very special episode of Cosby. I, I hope you and your family had a chance to watch it and tape it and then watch it or and or again because it's a very special. Episode. Yeah. Uh, I wish somebody would explain this thing to me. Now, the American Lung Association, for years and years and years, have been doing wonderful, wonderful work. Uh, today, they announced that they are changing their slogan from it's a matter of life and breath to don't forget the cheese. <laughs> what? I, what? I don't know. It's a very special, very special episode of Cosby tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Just... <laughs> Uh, what a show. Oh, we, too, are doing a very, very special episode of Late Night tonight. Are we doing a special episode? A of late special night? family yeah. episode tonight. Yeah, I see. I don't understand that. Have you watched uh, the Cosby show at all this I've, year? I've, not this year. I haven't covered well, this Well, so they've, they've only been on now for this is like their third week. And, and the first week back after that six-month layoff because of the strike, they announced that their married daughter, uh, whose name is, uh, I don't know, Connie. Denise. Connie? Denise. Denise? Isn't it? Denise? Isn't it? Whatever. Isn't it? <laughs> the, Huxtable, the, isn't it? Yeah, the, the married daughter is now pregnant, yes. so they find out. And how early into a pregnancy would you find that out? Like maybe six weeks, eight weeks? And then two weeks later, <laughs> eight months? <laughs> really, you've had that happen? Wow. Uh, and then, so like two weeks later, they're having, uh, having the baby. Yeah. And, and it's interesting that it coincides with a very special episode of Cosby. Yes. We're having a special episode musically tonight, though, because be, uh, besides Robert Big tonight, shot David Sanborn with his own uh, TV show has, uh, has consented yeah. to come back here and be on our little uh, Nickelodeon project. We're glad that project. he's worked us in to, nice his, to have you here, David. to his schedule. Is there anything else we ought to discuss? Mm, oh, uh, this is a kind of a program uh, reminder, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow, tomorrow on this program, something very, very exciting will be taking place. Is that right, Special. Uh, tomorrow night. Yes, a very special occurrence here. <laughs> So if you can find it in your heart to, to spare us a few hours of your viewing day, that'll be tomorrow night. And we have something very, very special, very exciting, 
and, and I think just something the entire family can enjoy. It's a special family episode we're doing tomorrow? I don't know what I'm talking about, but if you're around tomorrow, there's something What is might... it going to be? Well, I can't tell you because it would spoil the surprise. Spoil the specialness of it, I guess. Yeah, it's a little surprise. <laughs> Uh, so the Cosby show tonight was like a two-hour Cosby, is that right? Huh? It's a one-hour Cosby. And, and they're, hoping, they're hoping that they had a baby boy. Uh, but, you know, they could maybe have twins. Wouldn't that be something? That would be very, very yeah. special. Yeah, it really would be. What's happening on our show? Is someone pregnant on our show tomorrow or something? Well, what'd you hear? Uh <laughs> No, it's nothing like Have that. Have you been but, you know, getting it's, around it's this, again? We're doing just a little special project. I see. Yeah, and then tomorrow we'll, we'll announce phase one of our little special project. Or as we say back in Indiana, spatial. Yes. Um, Family-oriented, though, I'm sure. Yeah, it'll be on tomorrow. You know, we, we installed this thing yesterday. Uh, ever since we've been on the air, whenever anybody at the, at the desk here would like uh, coffee or any kind of beverage, <laughs> We have to have the, uh, the, the stagehands or the crew or, or whomever running back and forth, and it really gets to be kind of tiring and, and fatiguing, and it's sort of pointless. So we have designed uh, this uh, simple and direct coffee delivery system, and it, it, it functions just like a... There's Al Marr, one of our stagehands, who's in charge of the coffee. And this thing, it works like a miracle, and it's just gravity. It's the same principle as those huge water towers you see uh, all across the country. So let me show you now the new way we get coffee here on the show. And I just turn it on. We all set back there, Al? Ready to go. Okay, here we go. So I'll, I'll turn it on. Okay, I'm, I'm open out here, Al. I'm open here. Okay, Anton, could we have a little drum roll while we're awaiting the, the coffee to arrive? And, and when the coffee arrives, I'll, I'll tell you something interesting that happened as a direct result of us doing this last night, Paul. I got a very interesting call from a gentleman regarding the uh, coffee supply system. What's the matter, Al? Power. No, the power Al? Al, there may, there may be snipers in the audience. You better get down. <laughs> Hold on, let me What's see. the problem, Al? Do what? Wait a minute. Okay. It'll be solved immediately. You, you know this is a TV show, right, Al? Yes. <laughs> Throw that in there. It's, it's not a PTA meeting where we're just having some coffee in Danish. Is it coming now? Oh, here we go. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, coffee in a matter of seconds, brewed fresh, delivered direct to the desk, here it comes. The spigot is open. Just see? There it goes. All right. Taking forever. It's taking. Thank God. Coffee. Let me, let, me, let me blow the head off the coffee here. Mmm. <laughs> ah, just like I like it. Tepid. Well, thanks, Al. Nice job. Uh, now, the interesting, when we debuted this system last night, this morning, the first thing, I get a call from Alvin Toffler. Toffler, remember him? The guy, the futurist, the man who wrote Future Shock. Exactly. Shock. That's right. He said he believes, he was stunned when he saw this. He said he believes that within 10 years, every home in America on the roof of their house will be giant beverage tanks. And they'll have as many as six different hoses running into every room in the house, and you can get any kind of beverage you want, day or night, just like that. Wow. The guy who wrote Future Shock called, called me. with that prediction. First thing in the morning. Based on seeing this piece of apparatus. What do you, is, what, let's do something. Let's go to the movies. Is there, what's playing across the street? Hal, let's just go over and see what's playing at the, the uh, movie theater on the 50th Street here. here. We got nothing else to do. We have a lovely. Oh, there it is. Boy, this is a great time to be in New York City. It's the fall. The sun is setting early, and it's uh, lovely. It's crisp outside. What's playing? Oh, it's without a clue. Let's go inside and. Has uh... anyone, Paul, have you seen this film with Michael Caine and the Ben Kingsley? I didn't see it yet. No, I've been meeting. Hi. Them. Nice to see you. Looks like someone's moving. How do you do, ma'am? But now, who would be? Who lives down there? Excuse me, ma'am. Hi. How are you? Fine. Hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> They don't come any friendlier than New Yorkers. Hi, how are you? Uh, all right, how are you? Good, nice to see you. Nice to see you. What, are you. what are you listening to there on your headphones? A uh, local radio station. Well, why don't you just get yourself a, a radio? Uh, it's, it's here, and it's, it's, it's in here. Okay, here. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> listen, listen, next time you're in the neighborhood, stop up for some coffee. Uh, I'm in the neighborhood now. <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I said the, the next time uh, you're in the neighborhood. I'll take you up uh, on if you, it, thanks. If you want coffee, come on up. We'll give you coffee. Oh, really? All right, yeah. I'll come up. Okay, now we, we're going into the theater, so don't, don't bother us. We have to, let's, let's go in there and, oh, let's go right up here to the box office. How do you do, sir? Hello? Hello? Hi. Please, get out of the way. Hi, how are you? Are you going into the theater? How's that for a question? How do you do, sir? I'm fine. Are you going in to see the feature? Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoy it. Me too. Do you have anything on under that coat? <laughs> I don't know. You know, you just, you never know. How do you do, sir? What is the price of, hello? Okay, wrap it up. Hi, how are you? Okay. Now, what is the price of admission here today? Six dollars. Okay, we'll, we'll send you a check. Thank you. Do you mind if we come in? No, that's okay. Okay, thank you very much. You're nice welcome. to see you. What is your name, sir? Marston Cook, Ed Marston Cook. Okay, nice to meet you, Ed. Thank You're you very welcome. much. Now, look at this lobby. You don't see lobbies like this everywhere. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Hi. How you doing? My name's Dave Letterman. What is your name? Mike. Mike, how are you? Oh, I'm all right. What do you do there at the theater, Mike? I work as an usher. An usher? So, uh, you know every feature that comes in there frontward and backward by the end of the run, right? Yeah. What, what can you tell me about this film? Uh, they're all right. Yeah? Uh -huh. do, do you personally enjoy the offering? Yeah. Yeah. Um, how long has it been running today? Uh, since this morning. Since this morning? Uh -huh. So it's a fairly long film, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, can you come, come inside and, and tell us what they're doing? I, I just explain to us what we've missed so far in the film? Uh, I don't know. I was upstairs. Yeah, I know. Can't tell. Yeah, me too. I was upstairs. and <laughs> No, we're just going to go inside and look at the film, so we, we need somebody to tell us what we've missed. All right, sure. Okay, here we go. Take us right, on inside on. there, if you will. Sell a lot of tickets today? Huh? Yeah, all right. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is a... Uh, is this the theater itself? Let's yeah. see the screen. It's a boring movie, too. Okay, show us. <laughs> it's, it's suddenly gotten pitch black. What are we... Oh, there it is. All right, if you could just now tell us what we're looking at. Do you remember what we're seeing here? Yeah. Has, has somebody been murdered uh, at this point? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, which, which one of these guys is Michael Caine? Which one is Ben Kingsley? All right, that's, um, I don't know that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, that, that, yeah that that's must, him, that's him. Who, who? Who, that, that's Ben Kingsley there? Yeah. And we don't know who this is, huh? No, I don't know. It looks like a professor. Well, what's this movie about? Oh, uh, I don't know. I haven't seen it that good, though. Yeah. Oh, it looks like there's going to be a mix-up here. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. many people are in the uh, theater right now? Oh, like about maybe 35. 35? Yeah. T tell everybody in there I'll buy them popcorn. Serious? Yeah. What about me? Just, well, sure, you too. <laughs> No, you're not getting any popcorn. Just just go from seat to seat and explain to them that I'm treating them to popcorn. Forget it. Everybody's yelling. Okay, good. <laughs> we we got a show to do, sort of. Thanks oh. for your help. All right, take it easy. Okay, bye-bye. Nice talking with you. Sorry. Thank you. All right. We, uh... What's going on here? We'll, um, we'll do a commercial here and then come back. we got a really good show for you. Hi. Nice to see you. What's your name? Mark? You're on your way home, aren't you? Yeah. Now, coffee? Yes, thank you. That's very nice. All right. Would you like milk in that coffee? Uh, milk would be nice, All thank right. you. Okay. <laughs> Is the milk working, Al? Yes, we got it now, Dave. All right. What do you, what do, you do for a living? worked out oh. of it. All right, Al. <laughs> you want what, it? What do you do for a living? I work for an advertising agency. I see. You're yeah. on your way home? Uh, pretty much, huh? yeah. Where do you live? On Long Island, oh, in Oceanside. So it's a, a long commute every day? About 40 minutes or so. Are uh, we coming on the milk? Is it coming or not? <laughs> Anton. There we go. This will just be a second. So you okay. can take this on the train. That'd be very nice. Thank yeah. you. What's the weather like outside? It's very nice yeah. here. I think we're having a very nice time. Oh, okay. There you are. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good trip. Nice meeting you. Very Thanks nice for stopping us. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. You see how convenient that is, Paul? 
Huh? That's much easier than having to pour coffee. It's in the wonderful. Old, the old-fashioned way. What is the temperature of the coffee by oh, the time it's it gets up? Oh, it's piping hot, Paul. <laughs> uh, here we have the Thursday New York Times, uh, November 10th, and it's the Cosby Show listed Sandra and Elvin. Sandra and Elvin are having the baby. Ah. And then look at this. You know, you know what a full-page ad in the New York Times goes for? I We're looking at about $120,000. That's right what here. it is. Yeah. So well, that's tonight, and, and I hope everything turned out very nicely for them. Very nice. We're having a very extra special show tonight. I know. Oh, I know. And tomorrow night. And tomorrow night. Oh, yes. yeah, tomorrow we have exciting news to mention. Now, Morty, should I bring uh, Mr. Trump out or do this? Bring Mr. Trump out. Mr. Trump will want some coffee. Our uh, first uh, guest's book, The Art of the Deal, was on the New York Times bestseller list for 44 weeks. We're always delighted when he can take a few moments away from his busy day of buying things. <laughs> He's just been out shopping. Ladies and gentlemen, please say hello. What do you think? You own a lot of hotels, a lot of apartments, a lot of uh, commercial residence buildings. What do you think? Put a couple of these in? I think it's pretty wild. Yeah. I think aesthetically the set looks fantastic. I was <laughs> yeah. wondering what it was. Well, we'd, we'd get some tape and kind of hide it up around the uh, molding, you see. You're doing okay. Uh, let, me, let me ask you about the election. Did things go the way you thought they were going to go? Well, I thought Bush was going to win. He did. And I think he's going to do a great job. I hope so, for all of our sakes. I, I really hope so. Now, you know everything there is to know about money, finance, economy, budget, so on and so forth? I never heard that so strongly, but I'm happy. But to... you're worth like $4 billion or something, right? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. So they, they kept saying that uh, we're now existing in a false economy and that in a matter of months, weeks, years, everything's going to topple down and this prosperity we have seeming, have been seeming to enjoy will just evaporate. Now, is that true? And if so, why? Well, I hate to say it, but it could very well be true. I really? Mean, we, are, we are living in very precarious times. If you look at what certain countries are doing to this country, such as Japan. I mean, they've totally taken advantage of the country. Are these the, the trade deficits we hear I'm about? I'm talking about the deficits. They come in, they talk about free trade, they dump the cars and the VCRs and everything else. We mm -hmm. defend Japan for virtually nothing, which is hard to believe. So when I see all that, I get very nervous. But I think George Bush is going to do a great job, and I think he's going to straighten, hopefully he's going to straighten things out. Now, let, let's take this a step uh, beyond, uh, you, you agree that something cataclysmic financially could happen. Is there any way a guy like you could go broke? I don't know. I don't... <laughs> These are always different interviews, folks. I no. mean, I love doing them. So, no, but I'm, so unique. But I'm, I'm serious. Are you... Could you... Could you weather any financial storm and come out still a tycoon? Well, if the world collapses, if wars begin, if everything else, I'm not sure that it matters from an economic standpoint what happens as far as Trump is concerned. But I would like to think that I can weather most, and, and uh, I would like to think that most people can. It's... Uh, I think it's a great time to have cash. I really believe that. Well, I, when isn't a good time to have cash? <laughs> I think it's a great time to really save as much money in dollars as you can and really have, really be in a strong cash position. And if you are, I think you're going to be a lot better mm -hmm. off over the coming years. And, and, and is real estate always a good deal or not always a good deal? Well, historically, it's been good. I mean, if you look at it literally from 1900 and you look today, it's, uh, it's been good. It's, mm -hmm. been, it's been great. And I don't know if that continues on, but it certainly has been strong. Well, what's the silliest thing, or at least it would sound to us as though it were silly, that you have money in? What's the, you know, like uh, exotic birds or something? Do you have like... I don't know. I write books. I do all sorts well, no, of little things. All of things, those, I mean, and those have turned out to be uh, making big dough for you. But is there one thing that to a layman would sound strange to well, us? The book I give to charity, just so we understand. I, I, I give the proceeds from the book. All of the proceeds go to charity. And that's, mm -hmm. that's one of the things I think that make me happy. What's been a rotten investment for me or what... Well, not even rotten, but unusual that we would think, geez, that's, that's odd. I would have never guessed to put money in that. Well, I'll tell you, little, little stuff. I mean, it's not going to be very dramatic, but we bought a whole series of birds for the suites in the Plaza Hotel. Now, I mean, these are real, live birds, and all sorts of little birds flying around in the suites. And some people walk in, they don't believe what they're seeing. Usually, they're little artificial birds. These are real birds. And we have to be very, we have to be very careful, David, with who we let go into the suites. Sometimes a high roller wants to come to New York, and they want to go into the Plaza Hotel. All right. And I'll never let a high roller from Atlantic City go into the suite in the, in the plaza mm -hmm. where we have these live birds, because the birds won't be live very long. Right. So that's probably one of the more unusual things. But I You know, I could have saved you a lot of money on that. All you have to do is open those windows, and you fill the rooms with pigeons. <laughs> <You're right. laughs>
Uh, yeah, I, now that does seem a little, uh, but you've, you've gotten away from the live birds, huh? Well, we have to do very strong checks as to who goes into mm -hmm. the room beyond that. No, the live birds are probably uh, still there. Mm -hmm. What's and next? hopefully doing well. Squirrels? I don't know. We'll get something. <laughs> we'll have to do something. <laughs> Fill up the suite with woodland critters. Um, and you just bought yourself an airline. We'll talk about that in a Fine. second. All right. Fine. All right. We have to do a... publicity about your acquisition of the boat uh, this summer. The Princess, is that well, what I call it? I bought it? a boat from Adnan Khashoggi, which was formerly called the Nabila. And Nabila. It's a yacht. And Adnan was... Khashoggi, excuse me for a second, is the, is the world's largest arms trader? I hate to admit it. Actually, it was from the Sultan of Brunei because he was a security for loan and a whole mm. complicated thing. But... Now, what are those guys like? Oh, they're real, real sweethearts, I have to think. <laughs> <laughs> they're real, real sweet. Uh, are they mean, tough, foreboding guys? Well, I'd say by nature they're not the nicest guys in the world. Yeah. Uh, you know, he spent probably $200 million on building this yacht, which was called the Nabil, as I said, and probably the greatest yacht ever built. And I purchased it for a business. I have a real problem using it personally because a mental problem mm -hmm. using it personally. I feel guilty about it, if you want to know the truth. But I purchased it, and I use it for my hotels and for condo people that want to use it and this and that. And it, it's really been a great kind of an investment. It's been fun. I use it for charities. I use it for a lot of different mm -hmm. charities. And you, have... you got a, a discount on it because of the, the name of the boat? Was that the deal? Well, as, as uh, his daughter's name was Nabila, mm -hmm. and he signed a contract. They signed a contract, and essentially what happened was they gave me a million dollars off if I didn't call it the Nabila. And somebody asked me, would I have called it the Nabila if I didn't have to call it the Nabila? And the answer was, probably not. Yeah. Now yeah. it's the Trump answer. <laughs> but they didn't want it called Nabila when somebody else owned it, which is... Sure. Proper, I guess. If you have a daughter, would you ever consider naming her Nabila? Just to... It's probably not a bad idea. It's cheaper than changing all the lettering on the boat. Um, and this is, uh, give me the dimensions on the, It's a yacht, a motor yacht? It's a motor yacht. It's a 300-foot yacht. Mm -hmm. And how much fuel does it burn per mile? Is that, a, is that know, how they figure it? I don't even know, but I, I really don't like them. Somebody was saying, you know, with Khashoggi, they just turned on the engines and did whatever <laughs> they wanted to do. With me, they were going to turn on the engines to show somebody how it worked. And I said, do not do it, because uh -huh. I don't even... I keep the engines off as much as possible, yeah. but it's a substantial... Has a swimming it. pool on it? It's got a swimming pool. And a pizza oven? It's got just about everything, including the pizza. Can you, could you, could you... He makes me feel very guilty about this. You know, I like no, to no, do no, other no, good no, things. No, I have no, to end up... No, you shouldn't feel guilty about this because, I mean, you've worked hard for this money, or reasonably hard. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't see you doing a lot of heavy lifting, but, you know... You know, uh, I do this show because everybody tells me it's the only time during interviews that they see me smile. Yeah, now, it's very tough we, not we smiling at we, this We week. appreciate it. Now, let's, what, what else would you like to talk about? We, you and Merv Griffin had a big showdown for a property in Atlantic City? He's a nice guy, and mm -hmm. he's got now uh, a big piece of property with a lot of debt on it, and I think he's going to... I hope he's going to do well. I mean, I hope he's going to do well. Mm -hmm. And he, he bought a, a piece of property essentially in Atlantic City, and I'm building a new hotel that I'm taking from resorts called the Taj Mahal, which will be the largest hotel casino in the world. And I think it's going to be a tremendous success. Is, is there no end to the kind of things you want to be doing? I mean, is it, is it conceivable that in five years you'll just say, yeah, this has been enjoyable. I just think I'm going to stop doing all of this and then... It is. It yeah. really is. I mean, I've done a lot. I've done things that I really enjoy and I've done things that I hope are aesthetically pleasing to all of you folks in terms of New York and what I've done in other places. And, and frankly, uh, I guess there's a limit. There's a limit as to even what is going to keep my imagination going. Yeah. And, and when I'm not excited by something, I'm going to stop. Yeah. Uh, and politics, we talked about this last time. Any interest in any kind of appointment or commission or a position with this administration or, or something down the, down well, the road away? I always had. I was, I was uh, I hope, helpful to George Bush. I've always had interest in politics, but I don't see myself running. I really, at this point, David, I really enjoy too much what I'm doing. I really yeah. love what I'm doing. Yeah, but again, if you're tired of this and it looked like people... I'm, I'm talking about maybe in eight years, in 12 years. Well, I'm not sure that you want to see the United States become a winner. Do you want to see the United States become a winner, oh, David? Of huh? course we want to see. <laughs> the United States is and always has been a winner for my money, Don. <laughs> now, I just, I just want to talk about this for a second because I... This is the most beautiful model of an airplane I've ever seen, and this is, represents one of the fleet of your new shuttle service from right. here to where. Where did you get that, by the way? Did they send it? What? Yeah. We, we it got is it pretty it. nice, I have to tell you. I'm yeah. just, I have to look at it for the first time. Oh, oh, watch this, Don. Oh. Whoa, my God! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Hell, geez. I hope... 
person. Now that'll, that will, you know, they'll. That'll never happen no, to the real thing. Before, <laughs> before they sell the first ticket, they'll get that wing back that'll on there. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> sorry, it just kind of slipped off, you know. Uh, Jesus. And he was supposed to be so careful with that money. He <laughs> no, said we'd send it no, over, but it's, just it's be fine. We That's all right. It's, it's not in bed yet. Beautiful. Uh, anyway, lo so let's start hanging around together. I'd like to hang around with you. <laughs> Come up to the office. I miss you. Thank I miss you. you. Have a good time. Donald Trump, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, took a tour of the White House with uh, George Bush and his wife yesterday. And the category, coincidentally enough, is Dan Quayle's top ten questions while at the White House. <laughs> He, he, this is a, a short list of questions Dan Quayle had while touring the White House yesterday with uh, George Bush. Who did Number he 10. ask these questions huh? of? Who did he ask these I questions? I guess just in general. I see. Some perhaps rhetoric, some specific, but nonetheless, a list of the ten. Number ten. Okay, if I leave my clubs here. Number nine. Who are all the old farts in the paintings? Number eight. Number eight. Can I have a Kermit phone? Number seven. Do we get the day after Thanksgiving off? <laughs> Number six, would you tell me about the rabbits, George? Number five, are all the playmates down at the sauna or are they shooting bumper pool? <laughs> Number four, which button am I supposed to never touch? Number three, <laughs> won't it be great if George and I win the big election? Number two, where did Priscilla sleep? And the number one question Dan Quayle asked while at the White House, Mrs. Reagan, can I call you mommy? The result of us doing this last night, Paul. I got a very interesting call from a gentleman regarding the uh, coffee supply system. What's the matter, Al? Power. No, the power Al? Al, there may, there may be snipers in the audience. You better get down. <laughs> What's the problem, Al? Do what? Wait a minute. Okay. It'll be solved immediately. You, you know this is a TV show, right, Al? Yes. <laughs> Throw that in there. It's, it's not a PTA meeting where we're just having some coffee in Danish. Is it coming now? Oh, here we go. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, coffee in a matter of seconds, brewed fresh, delivered direct to the desk. Here it comes. The spigot is open. See? There it goes. Taking forever. It's taking. Thank God. Coffee. Let me, let me, let me blow the head off the coffee here. Mmm. <laughs> ah, just like I like it. Tepid. Well. Thanks, Al. Nice job. Uh, uh, now, the interesting, when we debuted this system minute. last night, this morning, the first thing, I get a call from Alvin Toffler. Toffler, remember him? The guy, the futurist, the man who wrote Future Shock. Exactly. Shock. That's right. He said he believes, he was stunned when he saw this. He said he believes that within 10 years, every home in America, <laughs> on the roof of their house, will be giant beverage tanks. And they'll have as many as six different hoses running into every room in the house, and you can get any kind of beverage you want, day or night, just like that. Wow. The guy who wrote Future Shock called, called me with that prediction. First thing in the morning. Based on seeing this piece of apparatus. What do you, is, what, let's do something. Let's go to the movies. Is there, what's playing across the street? Hal, let's just go over and see what's playing at the, the uh, movie theater on the 50th Street here. here. We got nothing else to do. We have a lovely, oh, there it is. Boy, this is a great time to be in New York City. It's the fall, the sun is setting early, and it's uh, lovely, it's crisp outside. What's playing? Oh, it's without a clue. Let's go inside and... Uh, hell is this? Mm, this is good coffee. What's the matter? Uh, look, the damn mainframe is jammed. I had just loaded the program in, and the entire keyboard goes dead. This is just great. Gee, you know, uh, David, it looks like you've been hit by that kid's computer virus. Yeah? You know that thing that hit the Pentagon computers and knocked them out for two days? Uh, two days? I don't have two days. I need this print out now. Oh, well, now, you said that you, you loaded the program before the board right. went dead, so you may still be okay. Don't lose your head yet. Okay, wait a minute. Keep your fingers crossed, Paul. Oh, Here there we it comes. go. Yeah. There, there it comes now. Okay, there wait a minute. Go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, that's... Yeah. What do you think? Huh. 
You're a genius, Dave. Oh, shut up, Paul. I hate it when you try and kiss up to me all the time. Paid attendance is 32,180. It's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, Highway Patrol's number one source of income, Dave. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, program. Thank you. Nice to see you. All right, now, now let me explain to you what I'm worried about now. Uh, will George Bush be able to finish up all his vice presidential work by January 20th? That's because... You know, uh, yesterday morning at a press conference in uh, Houston, President-elect George Bush said, uh, I can hardly believe it, it's really finally beginning to sink in. And, of course, he was talking about that whole Dan Quayle nonsense. <laughs> right in, uh, I thought this was nice. I thought this was a darn nice touch. You don't see consideration like this anymore in this crazy, hectic, workaday world we find ourselves in. Uh, Ed Meese came out of seclusion uh, today just to remind everyone that he's still a really unlikable guy. You just... <laughs> ah. Don't you think that's considerate, Paul, that a guy would do that? Nice of him to do that. Yeah. Nice of him. Well, uh, oh my gosh, Paul, did you see the very special episode? Anyone, Paul, have you seen this film with Michael Caine and the Ben Kingsley? I didn't see it yet. No, I've been meaning to. Hi. Him. Nice to see you. Looks like someone's moving. How do you do, ma'am? But now, who would be? Who lives down there? Excuse me, ma'am. Hi. How are you? Fine. Hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> they don't come any friendlier than New Yorkers. Hi, how are you? Uh, all right, how are you? Good, nice to see you. Nice to see you. What, are you. what are you listening to there on your headphones? Uh, local radio station. Well, why don't you just get yourself a, a radio? Uh, it's, it's here, and it's, it's, it's in here. Okay, here. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> listen, listen, next time you're in the neighborhood, stop up for some coffee. Uh, I'm in the neighborhood now. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I know, but I said the, the next time uh, you're in the neighborhood. I'll take you up uh, on if it, you, If you want coffee, come on up. We'll give you coffee. Oh, really? All right, yeah. I'll come up. Okay, now we, we're going into the theater, so don't, don't bother us. We have to, let's, <laughs> let's go in there and, oh, let's go right up here to the box office. How do you do, sir? Hello? Hello? Hi. Please, get out of the way. Hi, how are you? Are you going into the theater? How's that for a question? How do you do, sir? I'm fine. Are you going in to see the feature? Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoy it. Me too. Do you have anything on under that coat? <laughs> I don't know. You know, you just, you never know. How do you do, sir? What is the price of... Hello? Okay, wrap it up. Hi, how are you? Okay. Now, what is the price of admission here today? Six dollars. Okay, we'll, we'll send you a check. Thank you. You mind if we come in? No, that's okay. Okay, thank you very much. You're nice welcome. to see you. What is your name, sir? Marston Cook. Ed Marston Cook. Okay, nice to meet you, Ed. Thank You're you very welcome. much. Now look at this lobby. You don't see lobbies like this everywhere. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Hi. How you doing? My name's Dave Letterman. What is your name? Mike. Mike, how are you? Oh, well, I'm all right. What do you do there at the theater, Mike? I work as an usher. An usher? So uh, you know every feature that comes in there frontward and backward by the end of the run, right? Yeah. What, what can you tell me about this film? Uh, they're all right. Yeah? Uh -huh. do, do you personally enjoy the offering? Yeah. Yeah. Um, how long has it been running today? Uh, since this morning. Since this morning? So uh -huh. it's a fairly long film. Here, David, we schedule. Is there anything else we ought to discuss? Uh, oh, uh, this is a kind of a program uh, reminder, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow, tomorrow on this program, something very, very exciting will be taking place. Is that right? Special. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Yes, a very special occurrence here. <laughs> So if you can find it in your heart to, to spare us a few hours of your viewing day, that'll be tomorrow night. And we have something very, very special, very exciting, and, and I think just something the entire family can enjoy. It's a special family episode we're doing tomorrow? I don't know what I'm talking about, but if you're around tomorrow, there's something What is might... it going to be? Well, I can't tell you because it would spoil the surprise. Spoil the specialness of it, I guess. Yeah, it's a little surprise. <laughs> uh, so the Cosby show tonight was like a two-hour Cosby, is that right? Huh? It's a one-hour Cosby, and, and they're, hoping, they're hoping that they had a baby boy. Uh, but, you know, they could maybe have twins. Wouldn't that be something? That would be very, very special. <laughs> yeah, it really would be. What's happening on our show? Is someone pregnant on our show tomorrow or something? Well, what'd you hear? <laughs> no, it's nothing like have that. Have you been but, you know, getting it's, around it's this, again? We're doing just a little special project. 
I see. Yeah, and then tomorrow we'll, we'll announce phase one of our little special project, or as we say back in Indiana, spatial. Yes. Um, Family-oriented, though, I'm sure. Yeah, it'll be on tomorrow. You know, we, we installed this thing yesterday. Uh, ever since we've been on the air, whenever anybody at, uh, at the desk here would like uh, coffee or any kind of beverage, <laughs> We have to have the, uh, the, the stagehands or the crew or, or whomever running back and forth, and it really gets to be kind of tiring and, and fatiguing, and it's sort of pointless. So we have designed uh, this uh, simple and direct coffee delivery system, and it, it, it functions just like a... There's Al Marr, one of our stagehands, who's in charge of the coffee. And this thing, it works like a miracle, and it's just gravity. It's the same principle as those huge water towers you see uh, all across the country. So let me show you now the new way we get coffee here on the show. And I just turn it on. We all set back there, Al? Ready to go. Okay, here we go. So I'll, I'll turn it on. Okay, I'm, I'm open out here, Al. I'm open here. Okay, Anton, could we have a little drum roll while we're awaiting uh, the coffee to arrive? And, and when the coffee arrives, I'll, I'll tell you something interesting that happened as a direct result of Cosby tonight. I'm excited about the episode. Uh, there's good news and bad news about the NBC schedule tonight. The good news, of course, the Cosby show is on for an hour. And the bad news is a different world uh, won't be on at all. Oh. Wait, 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 wait a minute. May, maybe I got that backwards. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember anymore. It's a very special episode of Cosby. Tonight. Very special episode. He's a grandfather tonight. Two, two weeks ago, they found out that his daughter was pregnant, and tonight they're having the baby. It's a very, ladies and gentlemen, it's a very special episode of Crosby. I, I hope you and your family had a chance to watch it and tape it and then watch it o'er and o'er again because it's a very special episode. Yeah! Uh, I wish somebody would explain this thing to me. Now, the American Lung Association, for years and years and years, have been doing wonderful, wonderful work. Uh, today, they announced that they are changing their slogan from it's a matter of life and breath to don't forget the cheese. <laughs> what? I, what? I don't know. It's a very special, very special episode of Cosby tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Just... Ah! Uh, what a show. Oh, we, too, are doing a very, very special episode of Late Night tonight. Are we doing it's a special episode? A of special late? family yeah. episode tonight. Yeah, I see, I don't understand that. Have you watched uh, the Cosby show at all this I've, year? I've, not this year. I haven't Well, this so year. They've, they've only been on now for this is like their third week. And, and the first week back after that six-month layoff because of the strike, they announced that their married daughter, uh, whose name is, uh, I don't know, Connie. Denise. Connie? Den Denise? Isn't it? Whatever. Isn't it? <laughs> the, the, isn't it? Yeah, the, the married daughter is now pregnant, yes. so they find out. And how early into a pregnancy would you find that out? Like maybe six weeks, eight weeks? And then two weeks later, <laughs> eight months? <laughs> really, you've had that happen? Wow. Uh, and then, so like two weeks later, they're having, uh, having the baby. Yeah. And, and it's interesting that it coincides with a very special episode of Cosby. Yes. We're having a special episode musically tonight, though, because be, uh, besides Robert Big tonight, shot David Sanborn with his own uh, TV show as, uh, as consented yeah. to come back here and be on our little uh, Nickelodeon project. We're glad that project. he's worked us in, too. I say, 